Buonasera, hello world, we are live, live on Facebook and YouTube. This is Paolo Granata, this is the Monday Night Webinar Series, number 10. I can't believe we started 10 weeks ago with this uh, special series of Monday Night Webinars to retrieve the tradition of Marshall McLuhan and understand what's going on uh, out there what's uh, what matters to i uh, to us in this uh, uh, special very important uh, moment uh, the title of this series is uh, pandemedia folklore uh, from the lockdown age and again so we wanted to some extent bring some good vibes uh, to navigate uh, these uncertain times, but also critically understand uh, uh, the lessons that we can learn in this uh, uh, current uh, scenario. And so here we are. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, as usual, we are uh, live on the Marshall McLuhan's Facebook group uh, and on the McLuhan Institute uh, YouTube channel, thanks to the generosity of Andrew McLuhan, we are uh, streaming on YouTube, uh, not only on the um, Marshall McLuhan's uh, Facebook group. And so, how are you? How are you? How are you? How are you, my friends? Uh, let me know how you're doing. How are you feeling? So, say hi on the chat uh, so we can uh, warm up a little bit and kicking off this monday night so i see some uh, folks of course as usual alex uh, kuskis buonasera paolo uh, robert bob uh, hi paolo and so feel free to say hi it's nice to know who you are where are you right now so just feel free to say hi on the chat and tell us where you are right now hmm Okay, and so uh, it's uh, June the 29th. Uh, we're getting ready for uh, another Monday night uh, next week. And then in three weeks, uh, a very special event, the Global Village Day on July the 20th. In the meantime, I saw some folks uh, from Cleveland, Alfonso, every Monday. Thank you for coming back again. Thank you, thank you. And then Maria Collier de Mondoja. Hi, Paolo. Hi, Maria. Hi, Maria. And Julia. Hello, Julia. One of the outstanding pillars of the Media College Association. Thank you, Julia, for... Uh, for joining us tonight great and i see from uh, someone from halifax however uh, because we are streaming on a private um, facebook group don't forget to if you want to show your name and profile uh, just grant uh, uh, streamyard the permission to grab your name and photo profile that's all so essentially please visit streamyard.com slash facebook and in so doing uh, your name will show up when you comment and then we put it on the screen okay and uh, i guess who can be from halifax and uh, i will uh, i'll check later but i think i know who is that and so, from Vienna, US, I was listening to Ezra Klein with Nicholas Kerr talk about uh, his new book, Anne McLuhan. Oh, nice, Nicholas Kerr, great. So, tell us more about Ray. So, feel free to share some um, uh, some comments. Okay, I can't uh, I can't open the link right now, but feel free to feel free to share. And of course, I want to thank uh, Alex Koskis uh, from the McLuhan Galaxy blog, the uh, blog which is uh, sponsoring uh, and uh, um, supporting this series of Monday Night Webinars. And I, I got it right. So from uh, uh, Halifax was Kim Curans, Kim, uh, fellow, fellow at Massey College. This is a great representation of Massey College tonight, even one of our special guests from very, very far away. So I really can't wait to get started tonight. And so 8 to 5, I see you are connecting. That's uh, that's great. Again, if you are on, uh, on the Facebook uh, group, 
don't forget to um, just visit streamyard.com slash Facebook. And so your uh, name and photo will show up on the comment. Uh, so feel free to, for, to do that. And then I see we have comments and people coming from uh, YouTube. And so here, Rhea, uh, Rhea Dumont. Uh, hi, Paolo. Hi, Rhea. <laughs> it's, uh, it's nice to, to see you all. And in fact, um, because we are live streaming, both on YouTube and uh, Facebook. So feel free to comment in Facebook and in uh, YouTube at your convenience, uh, and the comments will uh, show up all together. And then eventually uh, we want to engage you all, folks. So feel free to share your comments, to um, share your questions. Uh, tonight I like to experiment something new. So stay tuned stay stay tuned because i like to uh, experiment something new even looking forward to the global village day in the meantime i want to say hi from youtube to daniel mcgowan daniel mcgowan uh, hello from detroit thank you thank you thank you thank you and so my friends folks uh, how are you we are getting started but i really want to feel that uh, we are together we are together the monday night webinars to some extent uh, we want to foster this sense of togetherness hmm? this sense of uh, making sense again of what's going on around us the the lockdown has been uh, described as the biggest psychological experiment ever uh, undertaken. And so we are part uh, of this uh, psychological global experiment. And so we want to understand, we want to really, really make sense of what's going on and, and learning something, right? I think it's time to learn. It's really time to learn how to uh, foster that kind of resilience, that kind of uh, uh, creativity, I will say, uh, to, to, to navigate these uncertain times. And also as a community of friends, scholars, um, experts, uh, or uh, lovers in the field of Marshall McLuhan's and media colleges uh, scholarship, we need to get together. We need to stay in touch, right? So, and so we uh, we are here uh, eventually to do um, and foster the sense of togetherness i want to say hi to our friend uh, ruthan hello ruthan that's so nice to have you here tonight as well and they are both cool and hot yes yes i like it. i like the idea and uh, it's nice that um, uh, we started with this kind of uh, motto lockdown is slow down mm? we wanted to slow down a, a little bit we wanted to gather our energies and thoughts to start and rethink uh, rethink the global village rethink our our media environments the pandemia as we call it so thank you ruthan i'm not sure tonight will be cool or hot it's pretty hot in toronto actually uh, but we are trying to be very cool okay all right and then uh, uh, i have a f i see a few a few other friends uh, hello from wisconsin hello hello barry and then uh, hi paul it's nice again this is a facebook user Please, my friends, folks from the Marshall McLuhan's Facebook group, because we are streaming on a private Facebook group. If you want to show up uh, uh, on your names, so if you want to be on the uh, stream with your comments, please, um, please, please, please uh, uh, visit streamyard.com slash Facebook just to authorize StreamYard to grab only your name and photo profile. No privacy concerns, uh, no other uh, privacy issues, uh, just your name and photo profile, which is technically public. And uh, in so doing, you will show up uh, on the comments. Otherwise, you will look like a, a, an anonymous, uh, you will look like an anonymous Facebook user. Say, so, okay, it's nice to see you, but if, you, if we know who you are, it's much better. 
okay? We are a community, so we want to really put our face on it, all right? In the meantime, uh, um, Phyllis from New Hampshire. Hello, Phyllis. Hello, hello, hello. And the, uh, 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 there is a comment. Yes, that's basic media ecology, Alex. I'm not sure what you are referring to. Anyway, so I trust you. I always trust you, Alex. That's basic uh, media ecology. All right. So before getting started, um, I will in, in presenting our uh, special guests for tonight, as usual. You know, we are looking forward to the to the let me put this out. We are looking forward to the uh, special event. So we will conclude with the grand finale this series of Monday night webinars with a special uh, Monday night, but it will be a Monday marathon. It will be the first ever global village day, a Mechlanesque marathon, a Mechlanesque marathon, 12 hour from noon to midnight on July the 20th to uh, conclude the series of Monday Night Webinars with special guests from all across the world for 12 hours we will uh, rethink uh, the global village in a lockdown age and not only not only my friends I like to uh, by the way I wanted to say hi to my alter ego over there hello 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 this is a symbolical move as usual every Monday night we put another camera to explore different perspectives so, so we want to see things from different perspectives and different views and so that's my alter ego so you see what's going on here we are real people real uh, humans anyway so going back to the monday night webinar uh, today global village day uh, i wanted to make an announcement <laughs> where did i put it here call for participation call for participation global village day if you want to uh, participate as a special guest in the Global Village Day, just reach me out, paolo.coronata.utoronto.ca. Or if you think, uh, if you know someone um, who may be a good fit for the Global Village Days, uh, feel free to reach me out, okay? It's very important. I want to make this event an open event. I put together already a nice lineup of speakers, I told you, from all across the world. And, uh, however, so there is room for many other friends. Uh, it must be a celebration of the Global Village Day, the Global Village spirit, right? All across the world to celebrate our humanity, to, ce to celebrate our resilience, our togetherness, hmm? and rethinking the Global Village uh, in these uh, uncertain uh, times and possibly finding some good vibes, some good energies, some creativity, to again rethink the global village and uh, exploring what's going on, uh, what's going on um, around us, particularly in this moment. So, call for participation. Feel free to reach me out via email on Facebook. You can reach me on Facebook as well. Even tonight, so I always keep an eye on Facebook. That's why I look a little bit distracted because I need to keep an eye on the chat uh, on the platform here on Facebook. So. I'm in multitasking uh, modality. However, it's nice. So we are a community. I'm nothing but uh, the igniter so to spark the fire, okay? But you are the wood. Hmm? We need uh, all of you for really making this global village a very, very special day. It's the first time ever, you know, uh, that the necessity is the mother of creativity. And in fact, because of the necessity to stay at home, eventually we came up with this idea of the Global Village Day all across the world from uh, noon, Toronto time, from noon to midnight, July the 20th, we will celebrate the, the spirit of the Global Village Day. And by the way, uh, because, uh, as you may know, in the Marshall McLuhan's community, July the 21st is Marshall McLuhan's birthday. At midnight, July 20th, we will uh, cheer and celebrate all together. Uh, there will be many special guests that will cheer and celebrate the, the Marshall McLuhan's birthday. Mm. Okay, so 
save the date, the Global Village Day, July the 20th. It's the last Monday night webinar. And again, call for participation. If you want to participate as a guest or if you know someone who will be a great fit for uh, this uh, in informal gathering of friends and scholars, uh, something interesting uh, about uh, Marshall McLuhan, so feel free to reach me out. I'm very, very happy to uh, re receive your, your uh, uh, suggestions, your ideas, okay? So we are a community, folks. So again, I'm just the host, but you are uh, uh, the content, okay? So that's very, very important to me. You, your participation really matters. And same, your uh, engagement even tonight matters. So let me say hi to Sal, uh, Salvatore, Sal Greco in the global village of Toronto. And Toronto is a global village, actually. Uh, um, Agnes, uh, I think, uh, here, and many other friends. So it's nice to to um, to have you here. So feel free to feel free to comment and so on. All right, I think uh, I'm running a slightly late tonight. Let me let me um, let me put this uh, uh, down. Final announcement before getting started: the next Monday night webinar. Is going to be July the 6th. Jody Berland, um, uh, Gary Ganosco, and Isabella Pruska Oldenoff. A very nice lineup of uh, guests uh, next week. Jody, Gary, and Isabella. So three champions in the Marshall McLuhan's uh, scholarship. But let's go back to tonight's tonight's uh, tonight's uh, webinar. We have three other champions in the Marshall McLuhan's legacy and Marshall McLuhan's uh, scholarship. And, um, and so it's time to get started. It's time to get started. I have a question from an idea from Maria. Maria, I'll, I'll take your idea. Uh, I'll take your idea later. And Daniel is uh, sharing. Yes, lockdown, slow down. Yes, I, I totally agree. Okay, let's get started. As usual, uh, as usual, uh, let me um, introduce our first um, guest. Thanks to the Marshall McLuhan's uh, McLuhan's Galaxy blog, and thanks to thanks to Alex Koskus, I'm going to put together. He put together the um, biography, some um, biographical notes from uh, for our uh, special guests, and let's get started. So, our first guest for tonight, our first guest for tonight is Mark Belanger. He's a labor union educator specializing in information technology and distance education via computer communications. Among many other things, uh, um, he has a um, PhD in computer communication from Simon Fraser University. And his master thesis was on Marshall McLuhan and the art of work. And the very subject of his doctoral thesis uh, was online collaborative learning in the training of union staff in developing countries. And in fact, uh, uh, it's interesting to note that in, back in the 1995, 1995, Mark uh, became the first person outside of the United States to earn a university degree uh, via computer communication through connected education program with the new school headed by Paul Levinson. You may re remember, so we've been talking with Paul uh, Levinson about this very pioneeristic experiment back in 1995 about e-learning. And from that program, finally, we have here. So it's a great uh, pleasure to have you uh, to have on uh, here on uh, on the Monday night uh, webinars, uh, Mark uh, Bellanger. Sorry for mispronouncing maybe your last name, Mark. Uh, how are you, Mark? The first name is pronounced perfectly. So thank. Hi. How are you all? All right. So we are good. We are good. And uh, I like your uh, dramatic uh, smile and good vibes. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, for being with us. So where are you right now, to, uh, right now Mark? I live in a little uh, university town about an hour outside of Toronto. You're uh -huh. in Toronto, but I'm in, in a little town called Peterborough. Where, Peterborough. Uh, 
Trent University, which was Trent. the center of McLuhan studies for a while. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. An interesting the, place. Yeah. Yeah, Donald T. Hall, which was uh, exactly. one of the most important uh, uh, champions of the Marshall McLuhan scholarship, uh, eventually got to be the president, I think, of Trent University, and there is a, such a strong legacy there. So you are uh, keeping and um, uh, holding the torch uh, there in Trent. I'm keeping uh, in the tradition. It's wonderful. <laughs> and thank you for this. This is such a nice thing for you to organize a 21st century Monday night seminar. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I was at I was at the original Monday night seminars for a few of the seminars. And, and sure, it, sure. I and, want and to know more about. The your uh, participation there in the, in the well center. i grew up in toronto so how could you avoid McLuhan in the late 60s early 70s and it was wonderful so and you were a young uh, student uh, at the time right i was a I, I was a young person at the time and it was a very exciting time it was uh marshall McLuhan was teaching the world a lot of very fascinating important lessons and uh, it was a good time to be uh, to be learning yeah, I have a picture. I look at the smiling faces here, and right? this is from the Monday night uh, seminars back in the seventies. Uh, and that's, that's what we looked like. Yeah, yep. yeah. it's a very seventies, uh, yeah, fashion. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I like that smiling uh, faces there. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And so maybe later we will be able to to chat more about your uh, your take on McClue and how you were able to turn. Uh, uh, that uh, kind of um, uh, tradition uh, into your uh, your job, your activities, your initiatives. So I'm curious to know more. Wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. We, Mark, we met. Uh, I think we met back in 2011 at the McLuhan Centenary Conference. Were exactly. you there? Right. Yeah. 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 That yeah. was so, a fascinating conference. A lot of a lot of good people with. Uh, some insights into McLuhan. And, and it was especially wonderful because for many years, the topic had been ignored. You know, McLuhan was, was dead, his, his literature was dead, his insights were no longer uh, were helpful. And all of a sudden you built this revival that continues to this day. So you should be congratulated. <laughs> now you're so kind, you're so kind. I think in the, back in the late nineties, there was a McLuhan's renaissance, I will say, a McLuhan renaissance. And rightly, then eventually in the 2000s, uh, we started again retrieving, and the, the McLuhan centenary in 2011 was the, uh, the peak, the apex for, for, uh, for really bringing back uh, the prescient uh, and vibrant uh, legacy of Marshall McLuhan. And, you know, Toronto, it's the best place for uh, preserving that... Uh, that tradition and then of course there are uh, champions uh, not only in toronto close by and all across the world has we will see tonight so i'm glad was, that we are uh, working together on that it was especially wonderful for me because i had started my career as um in as a copy editor and a graphic artist uh, and ended up as the head of a, a quite large computer department which is a which a shift which is a shift in career which most people would would not expect. I ended up as the head of a computer department because I had read McLuhan and started to apply his lessons, uh, hmm. and that continues to this day. So so maybe someday we'll talk about how how that career shift happened. Sure, sure, absolutely. All right. So later, I'll I'll, I'll be back to you shortly. All right. I'm going to uh, introduce our uh, other special guest for tonight. Okay, Mark. I'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And it's um, nice to see that there are uh, champions uh, in many fields. Uh, in the Marshall McLuhan's legacy. And in fact, now we'll move on to our second special guest for tonight. She is a trained, uh, she was trained as a journalist at the Toronto Star and has written features, news, book reviews uh, for a variety of media outlets in US, UK, and Canada. Um, her university education include uh, the U of T uh, in, uh, here in Toronto, of course, uh, and a PhD in Global Affairs from uh, Rutgers University. And among many other accomplishments, uh, 
the our special guest you know, for tonight she published this uh, book which is a except the foreword it's a great book <laughs> and uh, it's um it's, it's a unique um, take and interpretation and presentation of the Marshall McLuhan's and Pierre Trudeau correspondence and letters so it's a an intimate journey into the relationship between this uh, to intellectual giants of Canada. And so um, it's a great uh, pleasure to host, to welcome here in the Monday night uh, webinars, Elaine Khan. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Um, thank you so much for inviting me and thank you so much for writing the introduction to the book. Um, <laughs> also, Andrew, Alex, thank you for the bio. Um, if you don't mind my saying this right at the beginning, uh, Paolo, I, I also want to say it's an absolute thrill to have Mark on this program with me because I met him too at the um, that same November 2011 conference, and he had done some work on that he'd never published on McLuhan and Trudeau, but I spoke with him about oh, it yeah. there, and he was extremely encouraging, and that's part of the reason that I got into this. So. I'm just delighted you know, you know, uh, Well, uh, feel free to keep uh, confabulating and uh, uh, creating something. So that's the beauty of a networking. So it's nice when you connect with others. Uh, and in fact, you know, I'm, I'm still uh, benefiting. I'm still uh, take advantage of that uh, connections uh, that I started uh, doing in, back in, 20, in 2011 uh, for the McLuhan Centenary. And uh, Elaine, we met uh, instead a few, a few years ago, right? So we met Met, uh, and you were working on uh, your, uh, it was a doctoral thesis yeah. on uh, Trudeau and McLuhan, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, how did you came to the McLuhan Trudeau letters eventually? At that conference, I overheard Bruce Powell saying that there was this correspondence between these two men who had always been interested in. There was this correspondence that had never been studied. And I was just in the middle of, of uh, settling on my doctoral dissertation topic, which was going to be on immigration, uh, probably immigration and the internet and, and um, how the experiences of inter immigration are changed um, by the internet. And um, I heard that the letters existed and I said, that's what I wanna do it on. And thank goodness uh, my you know, people back at Rutgers were amenable. So they thought it was a good idea. That's how right. completely right. by accident. And it's nice that that idea finally came to being as a as a real uh, as a real thing. And um, absolutely, we need to rediscover those uh, lectures to really right uh, explore that kind of intimate uh, approach to really understand that this. Uh, uh, the, yeah, this intellectual chance for uh, of the twentieth century. So um, I think, uh, yeah, we will uh, keep talking about your book, uh, hopefully. And then also want to know what's going. Where are you right now? Sorry, I didn't ask you. Where are you right now? I, I'm in Teaneck, New Jersey, um, which is the the two best things about Teaneck are one of my daughters lives here, and um, and it's fifteen minutes away from New York City, from Manhattan. So um, under normal circumstances, that would be a plus. Right now, that doesn't count for anything. Sure. And uh, Teaneck has also been in New Jersey. It was the early epicenter of the virus. I know. So, um, but been, listen, uh, but Toronto is like your second home to some oh, yeah. extent, right? So Absolutely. you're often uh, in town. Uh, yeah, my, my mother, my sister, my aunts, uncles, cousins, you know, yes. And right. my heart too. And your heart. So. And then uh, you know the, the the idea that Toronto as a global village, uh, the McLuhan's village, let's say, uh, it's it's a, it's a home for uh, many media scholars, of course. Yes. I do yeah. remember the first time I came to Toronto. It was a kind of mecca, right? It was my the mecca of the media studies, and uh, and I think places uh, matter. So the the, the actual uh, the city of Toronto, the city of Toronto, it's a unique uh, intellectual environments back in the fifties uh, provided the right kind of subsoil for. Uh, 
making the, the, the Toronto School of Communication germinate. Right? So mm -hmm. uh, I think Toronto really played a very important uh, role. There are a few nice articles about uh, of McLuhan about Toronto. So. And and even tonight we will talk about I think uh, the relationship uh, between McLuhan and Toronto as well. And in Toronto, McLuhan met many times uh, Trudeau, right? Um, I, yes, I understand that he went. He showed up at the seminar first of all, at least once. And yes, they met at McLuhan's home, and sometimes out for dinner. Great, great. Mm -hmm. All right, Elaine. So we will keep uh, talking later. I'll uh, finish to introduce uh, my my special guest, and then I'll be back to you. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll see you later. Ciao. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, by the way, friends, um, friends, I see. Firstly, uh, I, I, I know you are already reaching me out. I got an email from Ray about the Global Village Day, July the twentieth. Be reminded, July the twentieth. And uh, you know, I launched a call for participation for those who just connected. July the twentieth, Global Village Day. Uh, there is a call for participation, and so I got an email from Ray. So I'll uh, I'll uh, check it out, Ray. Don't worry. And then also I got another comment from Maria, Maria Collier de Mendoza. And so Maria, absolutely, Maria, we will uh, be in touch, and uh, I want to know more about your uh, ideas for the Global Village Day. Okay. So again, this is not my event; it's yours. Okay. So we are a community. I just put things together. I just provide the medium, okay? But you are the message, okay? And I think that's uh, that's pretty clear. So I will provide the, the platform and the medium, but you get to be the, the message, the content. The medium is the message. The user is the content. And in the meantime, um, I see a uh, comment. Buonasera, buonasera, ciao. I don't know who you are, buonasera. So please, please, friends, on Facebook because we are streaming on a private Marshall McLuhan's group to show your name and profile please visit streamyard.com slash Facebook one second just grab your name and profile and in um, no privacy issues no concerns so just your name and profile will show up on the comment otherwise it looks a little bit weird that uh, it's uh, your comments are uh, kind of anonymous right and uh, okay it's it's you hans it's you. okay hans you're super super uh, uh knowledgeable with computers and everything so i i know you may be you may have some privacy concerns so no trust me no privacy concerns just streamyard.com slash facebook and you your beautiful face will show up on on the comments okay thank you hans and thank you all, thank you all, thank you all. Mm. And by the way, so Sal is uh, sharing uh, uh, Bob Logan. Hello, Bob. I don't, I don't know if you're there. Hello, Bob Logan, uh, a standing pillar of the McLuhan's legacy. Uh, Bob, a wonderful story about the meeting of Marshall McLuhan and Pierre Trudeau. Okay, we will uh, we will um, ask uh, uh, Bob about that. All right, and now finally time to cross the ocean across the world going to the other to the other side of the world so i'm so uh, impressed and so happy to to introduce our next uh, uh, guest speaker guest uh, friend and colleague so it's a, it's a unique human being one of the most beautiful human being i met in toronto he was a visiting professor uh, spent one year here in toronto however but let me get the official bio uh, put together uh, by by alex koskis to introduce our next uh, special guest which is a japanese author critic and professor at Aoyama Gakun University in Tokyo. His work covers literature, music, and media with a special focus on Canadian studies. He is also one of the world leading Glenn Gould scholars. And so we're back to the Toronto School, Glenn Gould Scholar. He wrote a book on Glenn Gould, which is called the Guren Gurudo Ron. 
Glenn Gould a perspective. And there was a word that Yoshida Idekazu show Japan, Japan's highest prize for music writing. So, and among many, many, many other things, uh, um, our special uh, guest um, um, was a visiting uh, scholar for uh, one year here in Toronto, Massey College. Uh, and St. Michael's College in the University of Toronto and at uh, Robert Center for Canadian Studies at York University. And so I'm very, very happy um, to, to, to welcome from the other side of the world, from, from Japan, live on the uh, Marshall McLuhan's Monday Night Webinars, Junichi Miyazawa, welcome, Junichi. Hi, Paolo. Welcome, and hi, welcome, welcome, welcome. And so it's it's morning, right? It's, it's early morning. Yes, in Japan. It's, it's in the morning. Now in the morning, I'm I'm having morning coffee here, yeah, and coffee. you know, you know, uh, every every Tuesday morning, I've been enjoying this webinar, you know, here in Tokyo. Yes. In Tokyo, that's great. And by the way, right. so uh, for all folks. Uh, all folks uh, on on uh, Facebook and YouTube, uh, I, I just learned. I learned from Junichi. Monday night, right? Monday night means in Japanese means no problem. So that's yeah, why well, the, actually, you right? you often pronounce it as Monday night. Monday, Monday night. is means stands for problem. Night sounds like night. Night. Ah, no, I need to be night. Okay. Negation. So no problem. Monday okay. night. Monday. <laughs> okay. Monday and night. And we say Monday night. It means no problem. All right. In Monday. Night. In, in fact, Japanese this is the no yeah? problem. Same. The no problem webinars. Okay. So we right, can call right. it the no problem webinars. And we have many friends. Uh, we have Kim from Halifax uh, saying hi on. Uh, on uh, on facebook hello kim kim is a I fellow am. as well at massey college and uh, it's great that uh, you, you join us um, kim so junichi what's going on out there in in, in japan firstly you, you yes, left last yes. year so how are you how are you how are you feeling yes. right now so yes i i've been well i've been well you know um japan uh, japan uh, in japan uh, the you know the state of uh, emergency was declared in early april and before that you know japan wanted to keep uh, keep saying we are okay and no problem but uh, but the situation is uh, was uh, was found that very serious just as uh, other as in other countries so so unfortunately the tokyo olympics was postponed and uh, and the schools are closed and actually uh, in japan uh, academic year school year starts in april so um so we had a lot of problems uh, how, what to do to continue education and particularly in at uh, in well i work at university so we so we so all most of the japanese universities decided to resume education and to start uh, the first semester of this year uh, from may so we started teaching all the um, uh, at my university uh, all the courses are, are taught now online from from the very first um, so um, the first year students started exclusively online with online courses now yes and so and I'm and are you teaching right yeah. now or just in getting ready yes um every week i'm teaching i'm including uh, some courses including uh, introduction to understand media and culture with uh, with 20, 260 students at a time you know oh, online it's a it's yeah. a big course, big it's, course. A, it's a very challenging yeah. Yes. And are the, um, there are many McLuhan's uh, books uh, translated into Japanese? Um, I mean, of well, course, uh, maybe understanding media, Gutenberg Galaxy. 
Uh, I, I mean, I mean the, the the translation. Yeah, the uh, Japanese there, translation. There are a lot of Japanese translations of McLuhan's works. You know, um, yes, Gutenberg Galaxy, Understanding Media, The Law of Media, and uh, yes, Global Village. Yes, yes. Yeah. And also, I learned that um, I mean, uh, Glenn Gould as well in Japan is very, very popular. So maybe unexpected, but uh, it's yeah. it's uh, among many other countries in Europe as well. But in Japan, mm -hmm. there is a Glenn Gould uh, uh, <laughs> national yes. fans it's, club. It's, I don't know. It's, it's, Japanese people is a champion country, a champion nation. You know, for for Glenn Gould and uh, Glenn Gould is well popular and uh, and uh, major books were all of them have, have been uh, who, uh, translated and some of them I did actually yes uh, but who you met first uh, uh, symbolically Marshall or Glenn who was your uh, first uh, oh, Glenn Glenn I, Glenn I is met your first Glenn one okay two recordings through recordings when I was a junior high school student, perhaps, and uh, I was really, I got absorbed in listening to his music, his, his recording, his performance, you know. Great. And, uh, but, but I did not really know who Marshall McLuhan was like. And uh, I actually, I, I, uh, I uh, only a little, only a little, uh, I scarcely know the, the name. Um, because uh, McLuhan was really popular in, in late 1960s sure. in Japan. Yes, but at the time I was, uh, I was, uh, you know, just a pupil, so I didn't really know. But uh, well, my my first official encounter with McLuhan was that uh, when I was. Uh, involved in the project of uh, anthology of Canadian much Canadian studies uh, doc, uh, the anthology of documents on, on Canadian studies I was asked to 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 write and collect materials on on Glenn Gould and by the the Association of the Canadian studies and I I checked the content and there is no name of Marshall McLuhan and hmm. so I asked editor, why don't you include McLuhan's materials? And the answer was that you do it, you do it, you do that. <laughs> so, so I had no knowledge about McLuhan, but but you know Glenn Good. So um, I started doing my, my my research in late 1990s, yes, and I got involved in more on McLuhan and the idea of his, uh, you know. Actually, the the idea of uh, Mac, uh, Glenn Gould and McLuhan um, shared a lot of ideas on media, so sure. I was got more interested in. And I, in two thousand, I I visited uh, Massey College actually, and for staying three months and uh, and made a research on the relationship with between McLuhan and Glenn Gould and got a lot of information. Yeah. In fact, I have a surprise for you. Here it is. Let's see if it works. Here they are. Can you yeah. see? Can you see that? Yes. I, I don't know what that. It, it looks like they were on a on the beaches or some something. Anyway, and uh, it's a very nice uh, photo of uh, Glenn Gould and uh, and Marshall. And by the way. Mm. Mm. Let me say hi to Penny, Penny Johnson. Penny, hi, she's Penny. a pianist and a fine uh, a interpreter and scholar uh, in the Glenn Gould's uh, and Marshall McLuhan's uh, uh, scholarship as well. So thank you, Penny, for joining us. Uh, in fact, you see her uh, uh, photo profile, I think, with the piano. So we did a special um, uh, for the Toronto School uh, Conference uh, back in 2016. Uh, we mm -hmm. did a special um, Glenn Gould uh, uh, night at the Alliance Francaise in Toronto. And Penny beautifully performed uh, the Max uh, Sonata. And uh, it was a great uh, event uh, to celebrate uh, that um, yeah, the outstanding uh, uh, legacy of Glenn Gould in Toronto. Right. 
Great. Mm -hmm. And so Junichi, you know, it's um, it's so nice to see you. We have been spending nice uh, to see you a lot of time in Toronto to together. Webinar, yes. And by the way, talking about Toronto and the book and media studies program, the Pecha Kucha Friday, you know. And by the way, so just by chance, because we didn't, yeah, we didn't know each other uh, yet. Uh, I started this called the Pecha Kucha Fridays. You know, uh, you know better than me, of course. Pecha Kucha means. Uh, yes. Is it is it available online now? Uh, I, I, I I'm not running the Pecha Kucha so online so too much. Maybe okay. maybe next year. Why not? Anyway, That's so good. just That's to good. just to share, folks, uh, on uh, Facebook and YouTube. So Pecha Kucha means uh, short chat. Yeah, short chat. Very, yeah, kind of very quick, 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 and very loud quick, and very yeah, cheerful. Quick chat. Chatting. Basically, it's yeah. a kind of TED talk, but very short. Only five, six mm -hmm. minutes mm -hmm. per presentation. 20 mm -hmm. slides, uh, 20 seconds each slide. So it's a kind of a, a way for presenting, sharing, and discussing. Anyway, so I've been running the Pecha Kucha Fridays. Yes, Pecha Kucha uh, is a Japanese word, yes. Which, a nice, which is a nice uh, Japanese word. And all in, my, in uh, St. Michael's College, they all know what is now Pecha Kucha. So I, oh, <laughs> I, I've been teaching uh, what is a Pecha Kucha and even the pronunciation Pecha Kucha. It's a nice, it's a nice thing. And by the way, I just saw, where is the Johnny, Johnny was uh, one of, uh, is still one of my students in the book and media studies attending the Pecha Kucha Fridays. And so, um, hi, John. Hello, hello, Johnny. And then uh, we have uh, Sal uh, Monday night, so no problem webinars. And Hans, uh, bravo, Hans, you do the, the stream your uh, permission. Bravo, bravo. Uh, konnichiwa, yeah. Kon konnichiwa, is konnichiwa good Hans. morning or. Uh, bo good morning or uh, good night? Well, good good afternoon. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's good to, good, uh, uh, good vibes. Yeah. Good everything. All right, all right. Ohio is uh, good morning. Is Ohio. 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 Ohio is good morning. Ohio. Yes. Ohio. And Ohio. and uh, talking about that picture, uh, because it's nice. You know, this is a community. Uh, Monday night, uh, a community effort. In fact, you know, you know, you, you're just talking so about something, and folks help to make sense. You know that picture, and promptly Penny, Penny says that that photo of Glenn and Marshall was taken in late June 1967 on a grassy slope overlooking Lake Ontario. All right, so now we know where that... And I think it's the... Oh, did you find any other photos, pictures of Marshall and Glenn Gould together? Because I've never seen uh, many others. I think this is the only picture, including Boris Macron and, uh, and Glenn hmm. Gould. Yes, hmm. Yeah, hmm. this hmm. is the only picture, I, as far as I know. But... Mm -hmm. Is it possible that CBC, uh, at CBC, they have some uh, photographic documentation about uh, Glenn Gould and McLuhan? So um, I can't imagine that they didn't take any picture at the, at the CBC studios uh, mm -hmm. when uh, Glenn Gould used to run the, uh, his uh, radio show. So, I mean, I can't believe there is no other picture than... Uh, this one. Yes, there is a recording of the conversation between the two. Yeah, there are recordings. Yes. Yeah, sure, sure. Yes, but, it I mean, survived. They didn't yeah. even take a but picture. picture I, I don't know the picture exists or not. Yeah. But I hope so. It, it reminds me the the finale of the Titanic, you know, the Titanic and Rose say, Oh, I don't I don't even have a picture of him. So uh, yeah, I mean we have just that one and uh, the, yeah, that's why. Great, 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 and thank you. By the way, thank you, Penny, for uh, for uh, for sharing your uh, thank uh, you for let us know. All right, Junichi, uh, I'll be back to you as usual. So I just uh, f uh, I'm I'm running slightly late tonight, but you know, so it's lo uh, lockdown is slow down, so we need to slow down. So uh, I'll go back to you. I'm coming back to you uh, shortly. Okay, so sure, sure. I'll, I'll do another merry-go-round. Okay, thank you, Junichi, and I'll see you shortly. Thank you. Hello, hello. All right, no problem, uh, no problem uh, webinars, no problem webinars. I like the idea that, um, yes, we are, we are in a, in a, in a no problem uh, 
setting. And talking about Glenn Gould, the music, media, and technology, we have a great uh, friend uh, here, Steve Hex, uh, uh, who recently uh, got a special award in the Media Ecology Annual Convention for, uh, I think, um, a special scholarship in the in the legacy of the of the media ecology. So great, congratulations, Steve! Congratulations. All right, and let me go back to my friends uh, there on the on the green. Uh, I'll be back to Mark. Where is Mark? Uh, here you are, Mark. Uh, uh, let's go back to the um, to your uh, to your um, expertise, to your uh, explorations into the McLuhan's. Uh, uh, legacy. So you got to attend the Monday night uh, webinars. Can you share just one memory? Can you share something about uh, the Monday nights? Something you remember? The mood? The attitude? Uh, what I remember quite vividly about uh, attending the Monday night seminars was that um, the people in around me. Uh, said, why are you doing that? The man is uh, tied in with the corporations. You have to remember, I'm a labor organizer. All of my friends were, uh, are, were of the leftist persuasion. Um, but let me tell you a story. I'm a labor educator and a journalist, so we, all have we, we always have little stories. Let me tell you a, a story about uh, McLuhan. In 1950, The Mechanical Bride was, was published, and it didn't go anywhere. He, he had trouble giving it away. I think that's why there are so many copies of The Bride where he has his signature and it's, assi it's signed to, to somebody. He couldn't give away copies. But the New York Times announced that it was going to do a review of, of his book. So, so imagine the excitement in the McLuhan house and, and, and entourage when uh, the New York Times was going to do a review about this obscure English professor in Toronto, of all places, and they were going to do a review. The paper comes out and it trashes the book. It says, what on earth is this? We, we don't understand it. And it so a little sadness in, in the McLuhan family, I'm sure. But there was one newspaper that um, had a glowing review of it. It said, take this book, take The Mechanical Bride, and discuss it around your dinner table. Bring it into your family, talk about it around the dinner table. Because what it talks about is how the corporations have taken over our senses have taken over our, our uh, understanding and our explanations of, of the world, and the corporations have done this. And not only that, but the media companies at the time have taken over. So have these discussions. The newspaper that had that review was the, the, the monthly publication of the United Auto Workers. That's the union that my father was. I grew up in, the United, in a UAW family, and it was, uh, it was a, a, a revelation for, uh, for me because of my, my politics. I'm a little on the left because I'm, I'm, I'm a labor organizer. People didn't understand that McLuhan's political statement was in what, what is uh, now being shown. His, that is his political statement. And he sticks with it all through his life. In fact, there's this wonderful little uh, anecdote, uh, letter he, he says to some critic somewhere who, uh, who attacked his uh, ideas. And he said, well, why didn't he read The Mechanical Bride? Well, of course, nobody read The Mechanical Bride. Hmm. But, if, but if you read The Mechanical Bride, it is his statement. And he was he was he got the reputation as being uh, somebody who sucked up to the corporations because of all of the speaking engagement engagements he did but the man had a very um i'm going to call it a small l, l liberal uh, uh, attachment to the world and one of the d more delightful ways of showing this and proving this is with and i have it hello elaine oh wow this is your book uh, elaine's book has this wonderful exchange of letters around the Monday night seminars and, uh, uh, and the relationship between Pierre Trudeau. Pierre Trudeau was a very liberal Canadian prime minister. 
And so those people who attacked McLuhan as a right wing uh, lackey of the corporations did not understand. They didn't read The Mechanical Bride. They did not read Elaine's book, which was not out at the time, but is now at your favorite bookstore seller. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> so that's how I got to come into it. And what it did for me was I graduated in journalism. My, my first degree was in journalism, but I ended up as the head of a computer department because I was able to analyze how technology was coming into play as an art, and I was able to apply it to my work as the head of a, uh, of a computer department. My message is, if you want to understand more about his political stance, you have to get two books, The Mechanical Bride and Elaine's book. Hello, Elaine. Uh, great. No, I, I didn't expect so um, and much enthusiasm for a latest book. I mean, it's it's a, it's a great I'm one, not. and it's a nice surprise that you you got you got it. And it's uh, I totally agree. I totally agree. Sometimes um, we take for granted uh, that um, mechanical bride, mechanical bride, uh, uh, really uh, gets us into the Marshall McLuhan's. Uh, uh, as, a, as a media scholar, I will say, and um, I, I think uh, it's all about the method, so the methodology of applying the methodology of art critique to understand in society. So th I think uh, there is a statement in Mechanical's, Mechanical Bride where McLuhan really says that I want to really uh, apply that methodology, the method of art critique for the first time ever to the understanding of the media environment uh, and, um, and, and contemporary society. Uh, it's all about the method, right? It's all about that specific uh, understanding. And I like uh, that you pointed out an, an obscure professor of English literature, right? So how that uh, professor of English literature came to uh, be the, the most uh, important media scholar. So, and I think uh, um, absolutely, the Mechanical Bright, uh, Bright is a, is a, is a uh, that book that really shows that kind of method, absolutely. And uh, by the way, so we have a few friends commenting and uh, first of all, let me say hi to Masood, Hello, Masood, Corey, and uh, um, and another Facebook user. But again, so in order to show up your name and profile, please go to uh, streamyard.com slash Facebook if you want to show on uh, with your name. And so, Mark, that's uh, that's great. Um, what about instead that your uh, you know, I've been asking your uh, um, a quote, Marshall McLuhan's quote, and uh, a special object to uh, make sense of the current momentum. Uh, no, let's uh, let's let's do the object later. So let's. I wanted to get a get a look at your uh, quote. I'm gonna screen that. Uh, the global village is populated with discarnate human beings. Who no longer exist as physical presences. Instead, the electronic or discarnate person is simply an image or an information pattern, nothing more. What's your take on that? I think that quote is so um, it, it, it's so important to what's currently happening on the internet. He he meant it. Uh, years and years and years ago as a warning that corporations, companies would gather so much information on individuals that they would know more about the individual than the person themselves. So there's all kinds of information about me, for instance, that I have no idea how they've collected it, but it means that there is, there is, a, there is a Marc Boulanger off in some kind of computer system or series of computer systems, and that's what he was talking about. My particular take on that and what concerns me most these days is discarnate means without body. And that's what's happening in uh, internet chat rooms. Not When people are talking, they don't see the body. So they don't get the cues from you know, the, the, the smile or the frown or the, or the eyes narrowing. Uh, 
Um, and for us, in a, it, for us in a community like this, it's it, it's fine. We we can all chat and we know each other and we, or we can learn about about each other. But I think what's happening in a lot of internet uh, chat rooms is that people are reacting to other people without thinking of them as bodies, without thinking of them as individuals with feelings. That so that's why the discourse in internet chat rooms is so disgusting at some times. There are people who react to other people in ways they would never do if the person was even in a screen in front of them. So the the concept of discarnate uh, bodiless communication uh, added on to what the Facebooks and the, the Googles are collecting about us uh, is, is really a quite important and an essential insight into what's happening. And that comes from Marshall McLuhan from, what, 20, 30 years ago. Great. And I was thinking, I have a question about the discarnate men. And uh, uh, you have been practicing, not only studying, but practicing uh, e-learning, uh, online learning, uh, um, computer-mediated uh, learning, and so on. So uh, is the student discarnate in the e-learning uh, setting? So what's, uh, what's about uh, the, um, the idea of uh, losing a physical, uh, a physical instance in the online learning um, mode? Well, you, you're a professor, you're teaching. One of your students is John in the seminar this evening. You know John. You know if he's uh, if he's small, tall, big, little. He's, but if you see him in a chat room where it's only text, you have no idea what John is like. Is he smiling when he says this? Is there a smirk? Is he uh, is he relating in in ways that you don't understand because you can't see the the way he, he's moving his hands and such? We have lost that, and I think that's a large reason for. The, some of the, the horribleness that is happening on the internet, that we just don't see the bodies in, anymore. Uh, I, I don't know how we solve that other than this medium. Maybe this medium, so, well, so many people are, are using it, but uh, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a serious problem. And, uh, and McLuhan studied it not only in uh, a couple of speeches. It, this, was a, this was a central concept of his. I have a book... Uh, I have his last book before Laws of Media, which I'm not a fan of, I have to admit. We, we, we'll chat about that someday. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, but well, I have his last book before Laws of Media. It's called Debating the Systems. It, uh, it was never published. It was a book that was supposed to be the sequel to Take Today. And it is such, huh. an, it is such an energetic, creative way of approaching technology that allowed me to understand where computer and where uh, technology was going and where it's going now. That book was never published. I have, I have a photocopied version of it because I, I studied um, in, in the Canadian archives, uh, but it, it, it has insights that uh, uh, should not be ignored. Hmm. All right, folks. On uh, folks on the McLuhan School, young students, young scholars. If you want to dig deeper into some uh, unpublished uh, works uh, by Marshall McLuhan, so I think uh, there's, there's a dissertation there. Trust me on this one. Absolutely, no, I trust you. And uh, okay, feel free to reach out, uh, Mark. Uh, so for uh, maybe any possible uh, outcomes from uh, this book. Yeah, it's called anyway, way, the systems. Yeah, thank you. Now, I wanted to share the, of course, our Alex Koskis uh, philologically uh, right on finding the right uh, quote at the right time. And uh, at the speed of light, uh, minus the physical body, man is discarnate. And discarnate man is not related to natural law. And so um, there's much about uh, about that. We've been we've been um, discussing about uh, the discarnate men already in the modern webinars, and again in this state of uh, isolation and online uh, modality, uh, homework, uh, homeschooling, uh, home everything. So we are once again rediscovering how Marshall McLuhan's uh, uh, prescient insights uh, are uh, relevant to understand uh, what's going on uh, um, today. Um, and I wanted to... So, a Mechanical Bride, I think, generated a kind of discussion on the chat. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Wilson, for pointing out. Uh, hello, Wilson, by the way. Hello, hello, hello. The GIF uh, magician, uh, Wilson uh, Oliveira, is a fine uh, uh, Brazilian scholar from uh, Rio, I think. Uh, Wilson Oliveira is a fine scholar who is... Um, uh, um, doing research on uh, GIF, the GIFs as a, as a medium to um, engage in in, uh, in uh, participatory culture, I will say. So, anyway, so technology means from the mechanical bride, technology means constant social revolution. Yeah, I like this. There is a kind of a social uh, take on on uh, mechanical bride. Yes. And then uh, Ruth, uh, Ruthan, uh, uh, thanks Mark for reminders about the importance of mechanical bride, social, political, economic power of mad men and media to some extent, yes. And um, uh, Corey, 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 hello Corey. Uh, great reservation to laws of media. I want to know more about this reservation. And uh, happy to chat, Corey. So feel free to to keep chatting, and uh, you can even reach me out on uh, via email. Okay, so I'm always always in a multitasking modality here. I have tons of uh, windows. Uh, I think you can see the um, where's this? Okay, yeah, there we, you can see my monitors there. All right, Corey, um, challenge, okay? The challenge on great reservation to mechanical bride. No, to laws of media, to laws of media. And all right, Mark, I'll be back to you because, uh, because uh, okay, uh, Corey, say please. Uh, I'll be back to you because I want to know more about your secret object. Don't reveal yet, don't reveal yet. I want to know more about your secret object in a following merry-go-round, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank you. And Elaine, where are you? Elaine, sorry, sorry. Where are Elaine? Where are you? Here yeah. you are. Here you are. Okay. I made a, I made a mess here. All right. Now we are there. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. um, Elaine, firstly, yeah. what's um, what's your take on on uh, you know the core question? I uh, the core question I'm uh, asking to my um, guests the what are the lessons we are learning in uh, the current scenario from the kind of current scenario so as a writer as a scholar uh, as a journalist uh, yeah what kind of lesson you are learning or maybe as a society we are learning so if you should say in a few words a lesson we are learning i'm learning i can't get as much writing and reading done as i'd like to and there are all kinds of television programs i'm watching instead um which is not necessarily uh making me uh happy I, i'm learning there's a there's a cartoon in um, the medium is is the massage that has a couple of girls leaving their their class in high school and and the the punchline is or the caption is it's not that I don't like current events there have just been so much so many of them lately and um, I, I guess I'm learning about how much overwhelmed I can I can deal with it at at one time. Um, I'm learning a lot about language, and sometimes I'm learning that um, that I get impatient with what I sometimes consider oversensitivity to language. Uh, for example, and I'm, some of you have heard me say this before, but um, I, I thank you. I, I recently uh, was at an anti-racism thing because of course that that's going on here too right i mean there's the, the we're dealing with racism and classism and sexism and the virus and and lockdown and and everything like that so i was at an anti-racism um uh class set webinar and i learned that the word ally for someone who wants to be you know supportive um for example of black lives matter just to give you an example that ally is not a good word anymore. It's not strong enough. So the word you should use is accomplice. And I went to another another webinar and I was told the word you should use 
is co-conspirator. And then around the same time, that exact same week, we were finding out about defunding the police. And what does it mean? Does it mean take away all their money? Does it mean take away some of their money and direct it elsewhere? And so much of this is situational where you're living, right? Which country, which part of which country, what media you're, you're reading. So I guess I'm learning that the global village is very kind of split. I mean, this, this past weekend, I was, I was reading an article I thought was really good um, from someone in Canada who was talking about indigenous peoples and how it's just wrong to clump them all together. We have to learn the names of the various groups and use them. And thought about it, agreed with her. I, I think that's true. It's going to take a lot of learning on my part to do that. But okay, I think it's she's right. And then I was reading something that was in the United States and something fairly progressive just within you know a day of that. It was talking about how we need to capitalize the word indigenous rather than use it with a small I. So they're not quite at the stage yet of where that person was who was talking about learning all the various groups. Um, I'm trying to learn how to deal with being swamped all the time. And I think so is everybody else. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's the one way I think we're all very much together. Well, I like you pointed out. So language uh, as a medium, uh, it's uh, really invisible, right? So we take it for granted. Uh, um, the lang, lang and parole in this Surian uh, terms. Uh, and we do not pay um, enough attention to the fact that language affects the way we think, uh, language affects the way we perceive the world. We take it for granted. Instead, there is a kind of a hidden, invisible, but such a powerful uh, influence of the, the very language, the very words we use. And sometimes the metaphors, not just the words, because words, uh, okay, or generally speaking, to describe material things. But metaphors are such a powerful, as Marshall McLuhan would say, such a powerful uh, um, translator of experience. And metaphors uh, sometimes really reflect or mirror uh, some uh, semantic realms that affects the way we think. So the metaphors are, that we are using uh, about the virus, for instance, the COVID uh, as a battle against an enemy, so the war metaphor, so affects the way we think. Uh, uh, um, and same as you as you mentioned so um, I, I, I like to yeah I, I agree we need to rethink the way we uh, use our language to to um, to think differently right so we need uh, to really pay attention to the words we use but it's also a question of how people are using them in different countries and in different languages you know i'm just always very aware of the fact that the discussions i'm having are taking place in english in the United States or Canada. And I don't know what's going on in other countries and in other languages. And that's really important because you don't want to make the assumption, you shouldn't make the assumption that it's universal, global. Great. And talking about other countries and other languages, of course, uh, it's time to go back to Junichi. So let's go back to Japan and I'll be back to you for, uh, yeah, it's 9, 13, great. So usually in the second portion, then I put all together. So I'll be back to you, uh, Elaine, and now I'm going to um, take back uh, Junichi here. Hello, Junichi. So again, talking about countries and language. So we learned already something about the Monday night, no problem. But I wanted to know more about um, uh, uh, how the in, in Japan, your Japanese culture is um, facing yes. uh, the, the pandemic as a social yes. Uh, uh, yes. experiment. I've been I've been thinking about uh, wearing sanitary masks. Uh, you know, uh, Japan has a, a a little different culture on the, on wearing on wearing sanitary masks. You know, um, actually, I <laughs> I wrote down some text. Uh, so so nowadays, streets and uh, trains and subways and shops and restaurants and offices. You know, most of most people wear sanitary masks in Japan, 
as uh, as is a uh, case with other countries, I believe. But um, and uh, but uh, it is not. Uh, it, it's a very unusual situation. But here in Japan, even before the appearance of COVID-19, you often saw people who wore sanitary masks in the street or in the office. It was not really an unusual situation here in Japan to wear sanitary masks, you know. Um, we Japanese people like to wear, some, some people actually, but uh, wear, we like to wear sanitary masks when we have way fever or when we have cold both in the street and in the office. Uh -huh. Perhaps in other countries, if someone shows up with a sanitary mask in your office, you will be alarmed, you'll be scared. Or at school, if a pupil, a student with a sanitary mask would be asked to go back home. But in Japan, those people will be uh, well accepted. They are welcome because a colleague with a mask is regarded as a person who has a very strong responsibility to continue his or her own job in spite of catching cold. Or a student or pupil with a mask would be regarded as a diligent, very diligent to keep studying at school even though he or she is not well. Of course, if a person looks very sick, people will ask him or her to go back home, but uh, wearing mask, a sanitary mask is not uh, alarming enough. In such a Japanese culture and aspect, there are some people who like to wear sanitary face masks even when they are quite well. Here is a haiku, actually. Uh, I'd like to see, show you. It's in Japanese. It's uh, mask shite jibun no kao wo tori modosu. Uh, it's actually it was made um, by my mother-in-law, uh, who died January of this year. Mask uh, shite jibun no kao wo tori modosu, and it's it's like this. So it means, oops. Putting on a mask, now I have got back my own face. Putting on hmm. a mask, now I have right. got back my own face. It, it might be very strange. It might sound very strange for you. Yeah. What do you think? And by the way, there is a great uh, mask culture in uh, Japanese theater as well, right? Yes, um, but but this time, the, in this case, mask stands for sanitary mask, not uh, not a decoration mask. Okay, sure. Yeah. yeah. So um, so the, uh, so 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 I I like to interpret this um, <coughs> uh, this haiku, haiku. That, you know. Uh, haiku has you, uh, one second, uh, Junichi. Because we, we, you know, language is important. Can you read it again in Japanese? So I wanted to okay. um, uh, listen again the the original um, uh, form. Okay. So in Japanese, mask shite, jibun no kao tori modosu. Mask shite, jibun no kao tori modosu. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> So, so putting on a mask now, I have got back my own face. So it's a, it's an action of retrieval in McLuhan's words, actually. Actually, and the mask is an extension of your body, and uh, so it it means that uh, um, it's a little complicated um, thing to explain. But uh, what do you say? Uh, um, so, <coughs> let's see uh, that. Uh, yeah. So, so as a strict rule, every haiku has a kigo. I mean, a season word, which provides the information of the season as a background of the poetry. This haiku, and here kigo is uh, mask. It shows. This, that the, the season is winter. So my mother-in-law, I'm not sure whether she called cold or not, 
on a winter day, anyway, on a winter day, put on a mask. She felt she was uh, relieved or liberated from making social friendly face to communicate with other people. Without wearing a mask, she might have been showing another face. She might have behaved well showing a friendly smile, but she must have been tired of it. So on wearing mask, uh, you will be able to retrieve your own face with keeping accepted by surroundings. At the same time, you will be able to isolate yourself from others. It is another kind of social distancing. Actually, perhaps it is a psychological distancing. And anyway, um, so this is not only not, not really an unusual strategy in Japan. Um, my mother-in-law Michiko Ogura has an amateur poet, was an amateur poet, and this haiku is not really famous, but it was well appreciated in, in Japan because it was once used for a question for an entrance examination at a, for school in Japan, and it is now available at an online database of haiku. Oh wow! I introduced this the haiku to the students of my courses, and it won a very good sympathy with a lot of female students. There are a lot of Japanese people. Uh, there are a lot of Japanese people, uh, particularly women, who they feel are forced to show socialized faces for communication, and they want to escape from. Uh, they want to escape from um, the situation. Of course, the majority of Japanese people prefer not wearing masks, and prefer showing their own faces. As, but as I said, it is acceptable here in Japan to wear masks to control a psychological distance. Last week, David Nospaskin on the webinar, on the webinar chat, wrote that McLuhan said mask is a put on. But for Japanese people, their real face is a put on. And a mask is a device to cancel the put on face. But now no one in Japan has to, has to got, get blamed on wearing mask everywhere. So um, this is a very unusual situation that uh, uh, you know every almost everyone wears masks now, and uh, and there is a one uh, reversal situation that uh, people who don't wear masks will be blamed nowadays, and uh, it's uh, Japan is a uh, country of peer pressure, peer pressure, highly peer pressured country. So uh, people are asked, forced to wear masks. So this is something different from what my mother, mother-in-law uh, expected. Yeah. yeah. There's a nice um, comment from uh, Sal, Salvatore Greco, trying to um, interpret what you, um, your mother-in-law was uh, referring. So he said, uh, uh, I'm guessing it means when I show my face, I give it forward to others. When oh. I hide it, it's mine. Right. Oh, that's a great translation. I yes. think it's a nice translation. So, bravo, uh, Salvatore. Sal yeah. made uh, a, a, a Torontonian haiku. <laughs> great, mm. great. And then we have other right. comments. And Ruthan, which is a great, uh, I think, a Leonard Cohen uh, fan. Oh, I will I wear a mask that. for you. That's, I think. Oh, I'm there right. is such a uh, lyric. Is it, is it a and lyric? Of course, the friend? good uh, Alex has a quotation from a quote from McLuhan, uh, forward through the rear view mirror. Everybody, uh, this is McLuhan's, uh, everybody at the speed of light tends to become a nobody. Uh, this is what's called the masked man. The masked man has no identity, no identity. right? And is uh, deeply involved in other people that he doesn't uh, have any personal identity and um i think um well uh, i th i think uh, to some extent uh, even the online uh, uh, communication we, we are using the, the video streaming or it's a kind of mask so you see for instance on zoom you only show what you want to show up right so you you only reveal you can hide your background and using a fake uh, background okay mm. you can show your face but it's a it's a kind of a, 
uh, mask made out of the screen. So the screen is a mask. The webcam right. is a mask to some extent. We yes. only, only yes. show what we want to show. And uh, it's even safer because, uh, again, uh, you are at home. It's, it's, it's a kind of um, a safer environment. And uh, great, great, great. And so, you, so your secret object, uh, the object is, uh, is the mask. Right, I mm -hmm. remember I've been to, uh, asking uh, the special object. Uh, oh, special object is yeah. another one here. I know, no, it's another one. It's the T-shirt. All yes. right, okay. Okay. Just briefly, <laughs> I'm curious to know about the other subject. So, what, what about that T-shirt? Tell me more well, about T-shirt. Uh, this is a kind of uh, monster or something very spiritual creature. Um, which appeared in it. Um, it it was uh, yes. I show you this. This is the same. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shall I? Shall I? Shall I make it's it? A kind of mythological. Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, yeah, as it is. Yeah, yeah. Keep it. It's a kind of mythological um, bird. Uh, mythological <laughs> animal. Um, no, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's an according to the survival document held at Kyoto University in 1846 in the seer of Kumamoto Prefecture. Every night, a glowing object appeared. So one night, a local official approached the object, and it was an allegedly female monster with long hair, with bird-like mouth, with three legs. She said. My name is Amabie, living in the deep sea. I can tell you that from now on, for six years, you will get good harvest, but uh, a disease comes out. Um, so if, if disease comes out, draw a picture of mine and show it to the people who are infected. They will be cured. Then she returned to the sea. That is uh, 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 the story of this huh, wow. picture. Yeah. So it's That's a kind cool. of mermaid with three legs. Yes. And <laughs> of course, it's, uh, so it's a copyright free material. And yeah. everyone copies and you know makes a lot of products available now in Japan. On the same it's, thing, yeah. It's very popular this time. I'm sure it's uh, very effective, but uh, it is an expression of my best wishes to all over the world. Yes. <laughs> Great. So, uh, uh, can I see your T-shirt again? So it's oh, just a bird, right? So, yeah, nice. Ah, uh, yes, this is my T-shirt. Right. Yeah, Great. I'm a beer. Mm -hmm. That would be okay. I, I will dig deeper into this because I got a few. I got a few. Uh, there is another icon. Uh, there's an iconology on uh, the three legs uh, birds. So, anyways, I'll do some research. So, thank you, Junichi. Thank you for sharing. And, uh, and also, I got an idea for I got an idea for the Global Village Day, Junichi. So maybe you can Thank help you. me reach that idea. So I'll, I'll I'll tell you what's going on uh, uh, for the Global Village Day. All right, all right, all right. Uh, now it's uh, nine twenty-seven, so it's perfect for uh, another merry-go-round. So firstly, you know, I'm am I am. Uh, um sharing tonight a, an official uh, a call for participation so on july the 20th it will take place the first ever global village day marshall McLuhan's uh, McLuhan-esque uh, intellectual online marathon from noon to midnight uh, Toronto time if you want to participate as a guest if you have um, kind of ideas or any kind of contribution or if you know someone who may be a good uh, fit for the Global Village Day. So please reach me out. I'll be very happy to, to really uh, engage you, okay? So um, the Global Village Day is going to be a community event uh, to some extent for the Marshall McLuhan's community, the media ecology community, and our community of uh, Monday Night Webinars. So you are very welcome to reach me out for the um, uh, Global Village Day, July the tenth, for participating to uh, the in the in the in the live uh, stream. All right. 
Okay, and I would I have been asking the um, okay, Mark. I see. I said okay, Mark. I see your object. I saw your object actually. So, what's your uh, secret companion? Your symbolical uh, probe. Your symbolical companion for uh, to the the lockdown for uh, this moment as of isolation. Well, it's not, it's not very symbolic. It's, it's Furby. Furby, <laughs> was first, Furby was the first domestic robot. It was designed so that people could talk to it and, uh, and they would get responses. And after a while, they would think that the robot was really talking to them. This is, this is 1998. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait a minute. Is it still working? This one is 22 years old, so it is, it is no longer with us. In Furby oh. years, that would be 157 years. So he's not... He's a, now, there may be... No, I, wanted to try, I wanted to try <laughs> well, interacting with them. Now, now, now the, people may laugh, but if you go on Spotify, you will find four or five channels that sing in Furby and about Furby. Listen to this. Go ahead. We can hear you very well, but I, 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 Jay, I hear some music. Yeah, it's still on Spotify. Okay, maybe. All right, folks on the chat. Uh, let me see. How do you spell? It? How, how do you spell it? Furby. Furby is F U R B Y. Furby. Mark. How do you spell the Furby? F U R B Y. Can you hear me? No, no, I lost. Uh, I can't hear you. Something happened. Something happened. I can't hear you, Mark. No, no, Mark. I, I, we lost you. We can't hear you. We can't hear you, Mark. I, I don't know what went wrong. That was the robot. That was the robot to the, made the magic. No. Bye bye. Not yet. No. Okay. Something happened. Try to. Why don't you try to? Um. I don't know I'll, what happened. Okay. Uh, if you can't hear me, okay, I'll kick you off uh, and try to go back uh, into the. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. So, uh, Spotify. I, I didn't catch. How do you spell folks on the? I can hear him. Oh, you can hear you both. Okay. I don't know. Something happened. Sorry. So I'm not sure what happens. But I couldn't uh, I couldn't hear uh, Furby. Furby. It's spelled Furby. So I was searching Spotify. Furby. Furby on Spotify. Here it is. That sounds great. All right. So I'll check it out. I'll check it out. And so, Elaine, uh, what's your... Uh, uh, oh, M Mark is back. Mark, can you hear me now? I don't know. Something went wrong uh, with the software. Here the uh, they say I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Try to keep 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 talking, keep talking please. I hello, I'm hello. Quite, I can't hear uh, it shows that it's so making folks, sound. So let me know if you hear uh, Mark. It says that I can. Uh, can that's you hear uh, me that's very because I can't actually hear Mark, okay. but you can. I don't know. Uh, all right, I will. Uh, I will. Um, I, I will move on. I'll, I'll let you talk uh, even if I can't hear you. Okay. So, um, but I was curious to know Elaine's uh, uh, secret object. Uh, Elaine, okay. do you have it's your object? It. Yeah, I do. Just one sec. All right, tomorrow. Okay, okay, so I do. So, and thank you for allowing me to have two. They're both masks. 
Um, and before I show them, I'm just going to change the screen for a minute. Um, we have a mask collection. So um, anyway, this mask is was a fundraiser for a, a group on Broadway of actors um, because they're unemployed. And if you can see, it has all the different playbills from Broadway shows mm -hmm. on it, um, including Come From Away, which I've seen a couple of times and just think is amazingly psychologically astute about all the situations it deals with. And I have a second mask, uh, which is this one. Okay, I don't know, no, you can't see it that well, I'm sure. But anyway, um, it was um, made by my um, eldest grandchild in her uh, <clears throat> sixth grade class, and she gave it to me. Uh, she gave it to me because she wanted to give it to me because she thought I would like it because I have masks, and she also gave it to me because she didn't have anywhere in our house to put it that, that, that she could think of. And it was a mask that is showing a face in the galaxy. And... So I just thought that would be kind of appropriate. And I've been keeping it. She gave it to me just before we went into lockdown. And I've been keeping it propped up in a chair. So I see it every single day. So it's definitely been the thing that's been helping me get through this. Because I don't Great. see where I'm in. Great. And so, Mark, I, I can hear you. I think it was my problem, so my fault. So something happened with my system. I, I came back and now it's working. So um, I, I wanted to let you continue on the, on the Furby, the Furby <laughs> thing there. Furby thing. I guess the thing to remember about Furby is that this is 20-year-old technology. I used it in my classes so that uh, people would understand how, fa how fast the audio and speech recognition. It was very cleverly done because it starts off speaking only what's called furbish, which is a fake language. But after a while, after uh, talking to it for a few days, it starts speaking in English so that the people, mostly children and me, um, can, can think that they're training it so that it learns to speak English. What's really happening is a very clever piece of technology is that the, uh, the, the microprocessor has been taught that on the 20th turn on, if they've turned it on for the 20th time, then you can change your program and start speaking a bit more in English. And then on the 30th turn on, it speaks a bit more. So people think they're training it. I think mm -hmm. this is tied to my discarnate uh, comment because um, we're, if you can tie, just think of Alexis yeah. or, or somebody else with this in the house. And, and I understand that in Japan, uh, domestic robots are, are a big thing that are, are being accepted. Yeah. Let's ask Junichi. Junichi, uh, uh, please, okay, what about the German? Yes. Uh, the Japanese uh, robots? Uh. Uh, there are a lot of Japanese robots, uh, uh, which is, uh, 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 you know, um, at factories, there are a lot of robots working, actually. Yeah. And, and by the way, we, at we, home, we, there are huh. some robots of dogs and uh, some other creatures, you know, nowadays. Yes. And I think in, yeah. in, a, in a state of the lockdown and the uh, mm -hmm. um, concerns, uh, health, uh, health uh, concerns and so on, robots may be very helpful, right, nowadays to mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. do not touch uh, something. So there, mm -hmm. is, is there something going on with using robots in... Uh, uh, in this state of emergency for the COVID-19? Uh, well, 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 I, I have, I have no, no, no knowledge, no particular knowledge about that, but... Yeah. Uh, I'm sure, yes, I'm sure I'm, there I'm is. Sure I'm getting, getting sure it's getting... Folks, on Facebook yeah. and YouTube, yeah. if you have any, any ideas, please share, please share. All right. Mm -hmm. And... Um, one, of the, one of the interesting things about the use of robots like this is that people will talk to it more openly than they would talk to other people. They will talk to their robot about their personal problems 
and it decreases the, the loneliness. These, it, it can be quite an effective therapy tool, too. As well, you get to play with the toy, you know. Right, right. Sure. And what about the robots and bots in journalism, uh, Elaine, uh, and algorithms able to write uh, news? Am I allowed to say I haven't got the faintest idea? <laughs> Seriously, I haven't got the faintest idea. I almost suspect Mark would have more of an idea about that than I do. Sure. Or you. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been uh, we've been discussing, I think, uh, with uh, a few a few Monday night webinars ago, with uh, Andrew Mishrishenko, and the idea of how journalism is going to be affected by affected by by um, uh, algorithms able to to write and uh, gather um, information uh, and, and, and replacing some real uh, some real journalists well, I, was uh, actually, I was actually at a, a at a webinar just this past week that was uh, co-sponsored by the Canadian consulate in New York and and the British consulate and um, what the main topic was local news and and hyper local news and how it needs to be valued and saved uh, one of the participants was works for the tie in vancouver and somebody else worked for the city in uh in manhattan and uh they were talking about having real people getting out there and uh recreating the idea of a beat reporter and sort of taking it away from the logarithms and the machines and i found that heartening actually yeah 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 and uh and i think uh, uh, it's time to engage our uh, our um, folks on uh, on youtube and facebook uh, you know we are streaming on live on marshall McLuhan's uh, facebook group and the McLuhan institute youtube channel so uh, i wanted to make an experiment because we have still a little bit of time I wanted to make an experiment tonight. It's an experiment even in preparation of the Global Village Day on July the 20th. So, folks on uh, YouTube or Facebook, you can, uh, uh, if you wish, to uh, step in the studio, the video right now. I wanted to make this experiment. If someone on... Uh, uh, I'll, I'll make something. I'll, I'm going to share, I'm going to put on uh, Facebook uh, um, the link uh, to join me into the um, studio. And so if you want to step in, if you want to show up and become, rather than a discarnate man or women, or women woman, you, you, if you want to reincarnate yourself into the live streaming, so hold on, I'm going to share, where did they, did they go? Hold on one second. Okay. I'm going to share the link to join. Here we are. I'm going to share the link to join the, um, yes, it is posted. I'm going to share the link to join the studio, the live stream. You should be able to, to see here, which is technically this one, streamyard.com slash and then uh, a few other uh, digits and numbers so if you want to join us on uh, the studio live so uh, let's make this experiment so let's see who is the first one i will say sure sal come on ray absolutely so you you are free to step in okay so this is an experiment because i do usually share the link to connect only to with my uh, guest speakers but tonight i think we can make this experiment we have a little bit of time and so let's see uh, if someone sal or ray so feel free to connect okay in the meantime any other business from our uh, uh, guests so um uh, mark uh, i i didn't ask you eventually about your uh, radio labor uh, <laughs> the radio labor uh, initiative can you tell me more about that 
Radio Labor is the international labor movement's radio service. We do uh, daily newscasts about labor news issues of work around the world. Uh, from uh, Monday to Thursday, there are five minutes. On Friday, the world report is 15 minutes. And that uh, it's a podcast, but is also spread around uh, through radio stations. We have radio, 40 radio stations that pick it up in the United States. So it's a, it's a service from the international for the international labor movement. That's Great. part of our job. The, the most of our work, though, is what uh, what we call activist podcasts. Those are pod podcasts that have been created especially to support labor campaigns. So, for instance, the one that I did today was about the two hundred thousand seamen uh, seafarers who are stuck on ships right now because they can't land because sure. of the, uh, the pandemic. The pandemic. So there's 200,000 seafarers on the ships right now. Some of them have been on the ships for like 15 months. M many of them are not being paid because the companies have stopped paying them. So that means there's no money to going to their families. And if there's 200,000 on the ships, there's also 200,000 waiting to get on the ships and uh, and make money. So uh, those kind of stories. It's, it, uh, my my daughter never listens to the newscasts because she says, "Don't you people win any time?" Hmm. Hmm. Now that's very impressive. That's very impressive. And now finally, I I better understand uh, how uh, your uh, the the labor the radio labor really uh, helps fostering and supporting social change. So that's great. Thank you, thank you, Mark. And by the way, in the meantime, uh, it, it worked out the experiment. So uh, we had uh, we had a few. Let me say, let me put it. There. We have Sal Clinton Ray from. Uh, let me let me see if I can put on. Uh, um, uh, okay, Elaine Junishmar. Here we are. Oh no, I can put only six. It's limited to six. Okay. But anyway, so we have Sal Clinton Ray from the. A Facebook group. Uh, I hear some noise. I, I, I'm sure it's Clinton. Yes, it's Clinton. Uh, so anyway, so Sal, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you, Paolo? I'm busy as usual. I'm yeah. busy as usual. Wonderful. All right, great. A wonderful job. It's a very compelling program to be watching. Thank you. All right, and say hi to Paul. Oh, oh, just on the back, on the back. Just oh, right oh. Right yeah, yeah. <laughs> Paul McCarthy. And Ray, Ray, how are you? Where are you, Ray? I'm good. I'm, I'm in Vienna, Virginia. Vienna, Virginia. So yeah. and now you are online. Also, I'm online. Great. <laughs> Again. <laughs> great, great. And Clinton, where are you? Where are you, Clinton? Are you walking? Where are you? Uh, hey, going? so uh, I'm just getting off work. Oh wow! So I'm on my trip. Oh, sorry for the noise. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Oh, that's why you are that the, the noise. It's it's a buzz. Great. So you know the Monday night uh, uh, walking uh, <laughs> webinars. Uh, great. <laughs> so nice of you. Yeah, so I'm nice going on you. the go. Great. <laughs> Great, great. On the go, on the go. I like this uh, kind of uh, uh, mobility Monday night. So great, great, great. And also, uh, who is that again? So you are free to uh, step in if you wish uh, to join us today for a for a quick uh, for a quick hello. So Sal, are you in Toronto right now? So yes. just uh, uh, your your uh, your take your your hi to the uh, Marshall McLuhan's community. Well, I just want to uh, say that I'm learning an awful lot about Marshall McLuhan as we go along, and just how much his ideas uh, still apply. And uh, it's not surprising that he's uh, considered the uh, guru that he is and uh i've been influenced by many people who were influenced by him who were students of his and uh i just think he was very inclusive uh of other ideas and he thought that information shouldn't just be top down it can come from anywhere and that any person can offer a wealth of information and 
help solve problems because who knows better the solution to the problems than the people often who have them. They'll tell you what the solutions are. Yeah, right, right, right. And uh, and the idea of uh, information everywhere, so the idea of uh, media ecology, information ecology, infosphere. So that's great. So, Ray, your uh, take. Well, I, I like the background of John and Paul because I think they remind me very much of Edmund Carpenter and Marshall McLuhan. The two came out together, but they were in different mediums, so the authorship became very confused at different points. And there's also a very famous uh, interview of uh, John Lennon by Marshall McLuhan. Yes. At the coach house. So. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, um, and, and, Marshall, the Center. and Marshall went and visited uh, John and Yoko, I believe, too. Great. And uh, Clinton, can you hear us, Clinton? You put the mask on. Yep. All right. That's, that's super. So I can't believe commuting uh, and uh, modern webinars. So your, uh, your take, your hi to the community. My, uh, sorry? Uh, just say, well, say something to the McLuhan's community. Your take. Yeah, I, th I, think, uh, I think it's great that uh, we can use media to all stay connected together in this way, uh, even when they're on uh, when they're on the go. It's really good to see Junichi again here, and uh, Elaine as well. It's uh, it's utterly fantastic. So thanks, Paulo, for, for bringing everyone together each Monday night. Thank you, thank you for uh, for supporting. All right, so we made an experiment. So thank you, Sal. Thank you, Ray. And thank you, Clinton, for uh, joining us uh, in a such uh, impromptu and unexpected, uh, unexpected way. Uh, so thank you very much for that. So I'll uh, look forward to seeing you uh, next Monday night, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Sal. Yeah, thank thank you. you, Ray, and thank you, Clinton. Thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, for joining us. And uh, uh, no, what's going on here? And by the way, mm, I uh, of course I want to thank, uh, of course, Alex Koskis for posting the um, uh, reference to the Marshall McLuhan's Yoko Ono and John Lennon uh, uh, meeting at the Coach House in Toronto. It's a beautiful uh, one hour video, I think, 30 minutes, one hour video uh, discussion uh, between among uh, McLuhan, Yoko Ono, and John Lennon in Toronto. And I think the same, um, it was 1969, I think. Um, then they went, uh, John Lennon and Yoko Ono went to visit Pierre Trudeau as well. So it was a great, uh, it was a great um, year. So, uh, time to time to uh, for a final merry-go-round. Time for a final remarks from our special guests uh, tonight. Here we are. So, who wants to start? Okay, let's use the same order at the beginning. So, Mark, your final remarks, uh, your final take on. Uh, uh, the pandemic media lockdown age uh, how we can make sense of it your final remarks oh, I, can't hear you. I can't hear you hello i'm fascinated by how alexander has been able to find the sources for the quotes mentioned in this seminar how have he, how have you been able to do that <laughs> he has a, he has a I think a special database. <laughs> really fantastic. We should meet someday, Alexander. Great. So your final remarks, uh, Mark. Your uh, final take um, for tonight's uh, webinar. To to leave it on a sadder note, um, I am especially concerned about what's happening. I'm a radio reporter. I'm especially uh, uh, concerned about what's happening with audio. Right now, I can take pieces of audio and make it sound like it came from somebody, and you wouldn't even know it. It it could be it could be Trump, it could be it could be 
Pierre Trudeau, who's dead. I could I could recreate. We will not be able to tell the difference between people, real people talking and the audio that's being put together. And I think Marshall McLuhan has given us many lessons on how we can approach understanding that problem better. Yep, yep. deep fake uh, video and audio uh, in, in journalism. Yeah, absolutely. This is um, a topic in uh, ethics of media as well. So great. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Elaine, your final remarks uh, for uh, tonight's uh, Monday night, uh, the ideal uh, lessons we are learning uh, in this uh, current, uh, from this current scenario. Oh, well, um, what I came across actually was a quote from McLuhan that has to do with a virus. So I thought I would use that. Um, it comes from a something he wrote called Advertising as a Magical Institution. It was in Richard Cavell's book. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And he's talking about advertising, but he's talking about critical thinking, okay? So he's saying, in terms of advertising, if there's a vi any virus for the human mind contained in this material, immunity can always be purchased for the cost of critical analysis. End of quote. So I think... That's saying we need to look at things critically. As far as making any kind of sense out of what's going on right now, I think we're in the middle of a giant experiment and it's going to be a long time before we're making sense of it. Hmm. You're right. So again, a giant uh, uh, experiment we are living in and we are learning. So that, that's my, I think uh, we will remember one day these days uh, as days where we were able to uh, learn more, learn and pay attention to what really matters. So that's why, again, even the series of Monday nights uh, uh, webinars uh, as a way to slow down, as a way to uh, stop and reflect. Hmm? There is a Latin motto, which was a Greek motto and then translated into Latin and employed by Aldus Manutius, the great Italian humanist, Festina Lente, which means uh, uh, go uh, quickly and slowly at the same time. So to think before moving on, right? Think before moving on. So we need to speed up, of course, so festina lente, so going quickly but slowly, so thinking before moving on, so and uh, I think uh, that resonates uh, the, the, the mood you were uh, bringing, so thank you Elaine and finally, from uh, Tokyo, wow. Junichi what's your yes, no. final remarks uh, it's, uh, it's early morning so you're going to start well, your day with this one well, on <laughs> webinar? So, so I've been, I've been spending most of the, the time for, for, you know, performing the online courses nowadays, you know, from the uh, from the, uh, the, the this is April and May and uh, and then uh, so I'm 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 really worrying about how to keep educate keep 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 education in Japan on on, on online and uh, and I found a I found a very, very good uh, aspect aspects of the teaching online for Japanese students. Japanese stu many Japanese students are rather introvert personalities. And uh, so so I, I last week I, I taught uh, the laws of media of Marshall McLuhan and uh, I asked the student to, to make a new tetrad. And one student made uh, the, the, the following tetrad on the so, the, so the online courses, on online courses, online courses, Online course extend computer literacy, obsolete handwriting, reverses into bad eyesight and bad posture, and retrieves opportunity to share your own opinion. And that is very <laughs> stimulating for students to to extend their you know ability. Yes. Great, great. And as I, we've been uh, using the Tetrad uh, over the past few weeks uh, to Tetrad the COVID-19, to Tetrad the lockdown, 
the online yeah. learning. So I like the idea of using Tetrad, uh, using the laws of media as a heuristic to critically understand what's going on around us. So I uh, really, really uh, cheer to the Tetrad as a way to uh, creatively make sense of what's going on uh, around us. Yes. And in fact, uh, uh, the Tetrad will be employed for the Global Village Day on July the 20th. Also, there will be on the Global Village Day, there will be uh, a torch. So all uh, uh, speakers will pass on uh, a special torch, uh, symbolically all across the world, uh, uh, from noon to, to midnight. So that's why I wanted to make uh, uh, another remind about the Global Village Day, a 12-hour mclaren -esque marathon exploring the post-pandemic world. It's going to be July the 20th all day long i mean from noon to midnight from noon to midnight and again so because this is a community uh, event this is a way to foster the sense of togetherness in our community the global village day is a call for participation so if you wish to uh, participate in the global village day july the 20th or if you know someone who may be a good uh, fit for the for the global village day so feel free to reach me out paolo del granata utoronto.ca so it will be great to again so play with uh, the global village to rethink the global village in a post pandemic uh, pandemic world so you are all very welcome and um be reminded the next monday night it's july the 6th uh, we have jody berlon gary ganosco and isabella prusca all the north uh, uh, on uh, on live uh, for uh, again exploring uh, what matters to us uh, in um, this uh, pandemic media pandemic media world all right so it's i think it, that's all uh, for tonight my friends so you've been uh, great so i wanted to say hi to all folks and bye have a good, good night to all folks on uh, youtube and um, facebook it was nice to make the to make uh, the experiment uh, we made so uh, it's uh, it worked out i think pretty well and during the global village day there will be many opportunities for stepping in uh, and, uh, and 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 enjoy enjoy the community so that's all for tonight thank you again to elaine khan mark belanger and junichi miyazawa from uh, from tokyo japan it was great to have you thank you thank you thank you very much hello elaine hello junichi hello mark thank hello you. folks on youtube and uh, facebook i'll see you next uh, with week, a really good time yeah. uh, thank you thank you and as usual so stay safe and stay sage have a good night you too. Ciao. Good night. <laughs> ciao 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 mm -hmm.